Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to discuss isotopes. So today's essential question, how is average atomic mass calculated? Today you are going to need your calculator, so if you don't have it, go ahead and go grab it and come on back. Alright, so here we go. We'll start with talking about mass number, which is something we discussed yesterday. The mass number is the, is the mass of an individual atom. Okay, so we're talking about how much one single atom weighs. Um, and hopefully, as you know from yesterday, most of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus, which means that it's actually just the number of protons and the number of proton protons that determine the mass of the atom. Um, remember, both the, the mass of both a proton and a neutron are 1 amu, so you can almost count to figure out the mass. And the equation we discussed was mass equals number of protons plus number of neutrons. So, neutrons and protons each have masses of about 1 amu. So you could count the number of protons and neutrons you would, and you would know the mass of an atom. Alright, on to isotopes. The number of protons, also which is the atomic number, determines the element type. So all atoms of the same element type have the same number of protons. We discussed this in the last lecture. Every single carbon you meet is going to have six protons. Every single sodium you meet is going to have 11. Um, every neon you meet is going to have 10 protons. So it's, it's actually the number of protons that, that determines the type of atom it is. Okay. So while atoms of the same element must have the same number of protons, and thus the num same number of electrons, they can have a different number of neutrons. Remember, neutrons are neutral, and so while with protons and electrons, you have to have the same amount so they can, their charges can cancel out, that's not the case of with, with neutrons. Okay, so atoms with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes. So isotopes have the same atomic number and the same number of protons but differ in their masses because they have a different number of neutrons. Okay, so we can have a carbon. Again, carbon has six protons. Every carbon in the world has six protons. But some carbons might have six neutrons, some might have five, some might have seven. So because it's the protons and the electrons that are responsible for the chemical behavior of an atom, isotopes are chemically alike. Okay, so even though you, one carbon has seven neutrons and one has five neutrons, they still act the same. Let's talk about atomic mass. Because the mass of an individual atom is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, the mass must be a whole number, right? You cannot have part of a proton or part of a neutron. Being that a neutron weighs 1 amu, one neutron and its mass are the same, right? So if you have one neutron, one proton, you're going to have an atom with a mass of 2 amu. You can't have one proton and a half a neutron. It's just not possible. However, um, as you, we noted the other day, um, the atomic masses on the periodic table are mostly in decimals, um, which would suggest that there's part of a neutron, but that isn't true. The atomic masses on the periodic table are what we call weighted averages of all the isotopes of each element. So we were talking a moment ago about carbon. We could have a carbon. We could have carbons that have six neutrons or five neutrons or seven neutrons. So what the scientists did is they took all of the carbons they could find, dumped them on the scale, weighed them, counted how many carbons there were and divided by that number. But they didn't know how many neutrons each of those carbons had. All they knew was that they each had six protons. So they come up, the masses on the periodic table again are what we call weighted averages. Most elements occur as a mixture of two or more isotopes. Again, an isotope is an atom that has the same number of protons but different neutrons than his, than his other like atom. So the elements of isotopes are typically found in the same percentages, also known as fixed percent abundance. So for example, if we were to take a drop of water from anywhere, from the lake and the ocean, from your sink, from my sink, from the classroom sink, from wherever, 
in any drop of water, 99.9844% of the hydrogen atoms will have a mass of 1 AMU, um, which means it only all it's made up of is one proton and one electron. Uh, the remaining 0.156% of the hydrogen atoms will have a mass of 2 AMU. Those hydrogens have one proton, one neutron, thus giving you a mass of 2 AMU. Um, and then, of course, one electron. It's these numbers that give hydrogen an average atomic mass of 1.01 .01 AMU. So on the periodic table, the mass of hydrogen is 1.01 .01 AMU. But again, that's an average. There is no single atom that has a mass of 1.01. .01. It can't. It can't have part of a neutron or proton. All right, let's learn how to calculate average atomic mass, or how scientists did it, and we'll learn how to do it too. Um, let me start by saying this sounds really complicated. It sounds really, really tricky. And the truth is, it's really not. Okay, so, you know, if you start to stress out listening to this, just, just relax. It's not nearly as bad as it sounds. All right, here we go. The atomic mass is the average mass of the isotopes and is based on the percent abundance of each isotope. So how many carbon atoms in the world have six neutrons versus how many have five neutrons, seven neutrons, whatever. Percent abundance is the relative amount of that, of that isotope found in nature. So to calculate the atomic mass of an element, multiply the mass of each isotope. And you would find that by knowing how many protons and neutrons it had. By its relative natural abundance, expressed as a decimal, and then add the products. All right, that may sound super complicated, but it completely is not. All right, get your calculators handy. We are going to now calculate average atomic mass. Um, it's, again, it's not nearly as bad as it sounds. So let's read over the question. I'm going to, I'm going to discuss a few things with you, and then we'll set up the problem. So our question is, is, says, copper has two isotopes, copper 34 with a relative abundance of 69.1% and copper 64 with a relative abundance of 31.9%. Calculate the average atomic mass of copper. Okay, so what this is saying is that we, there are two types of copper in the world. There's copper 63, which means, remember from um, yesterday, that when you have uh, the, a, little, a number after the, the symbol of the atom, that number stands for the mass of that particular atom. Okay, so copper 63, um, which means it, it would end up having 35 neutrons because all coppers have 29 protons. So copper 63 has an abundance of 69.1%. So walking through the world, 69.1% of the coppers you encounter are going to have a mass of 63 or they're going to have 34 protons. No, sorry, 34 electrons. Okay, and then we, we have another type of copper, which is copper 64. It still has 29 protons, but now it has 35 uh, neutrons. Okay, and it turns out that 31.9% of the coppers in the world are copper 64. All right, so remember, to calculate, we're now going to calculate the average atomic mass. So what we do is we multiply the mass times the relative abundance and this mass times its relative abundance, and then add the two answers. So I'm going to take the mass of copper 63, which is 63, and I'm going to multiply that by 69.1% written as a decimal. And remember, when you have a percent and you want to write it as a decimal, you move the decimal back two places. So it's 63, point, uh, 63 times 0.691 and we're going to add to that the mass of copper 64 times its percent, written as a decimal, which is 0.319. Okay, so now let's do the stuff in the parentheses first. Please double check me on your calculator. Make sure I'm not making a mistake. 
Okay, so I got for 63 times 0.691, I got an answer of 43.533. And when I do this one, 64 times 0.319, I get a score, uh, answer of 20.416. All right, so now to finish this problem, what we need to do is just add our two answers. And I got an answer of 63.949 AMU. Remember, mass is in AMU. So now we've got to go back whoops, and look at those pesky sig figs. And it looks to me, um, in this case, because, yeah, we'll do it. We have four different numbers there. It looks like our least number of sig figs is 63. So our final answer will be 64 AMU. All right, let's try another one. Um, but first I wanna point out that sometimes you'll be given an exact mass for the isotope. Okay, and in this case, use that mass when doing calculations because these numbers were experimentally derived. So they're very, very precise. All right, so let's try one like that. So now we have copper that has two isotopes. We've got copper 63 with a relative abundance of 69.1%, but now they know the exact mass of this copper 63, which is actually 62.93. So we're gonna use that number instead of the copper 63. All right, and we have copper 64 with a relative abundance of 31.9% and a mass of 64.93. So we're gonna use, since we know the exact mass, we're not gonna use this 64, we're gonna use the 64.93. All right, so now, why don't you hit pause? Try to do this without me and see how you do. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the mass of the yellow one, copper 63, and multiply that by the relative abundance written as a decimal. And we'll add that to the mass of copper 64, the exact mass, and multiply that by its relative abundance written as a decimal. All right. So when I add, when I multiplied um, the stuff for copper 63, I got 43.4846. And when I did the multiplication for copper 64, I got 20.71267. And when I added them together, I got 64.1. 973. And let's look at our sig figs. We have 3, 4, 3, 4. So it looks like we're going to have 3 sig figs. So we'll end up with 64.2 AMU. All right. That's it for today, folks. See you tomorrow.